Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel and welcome to March. Today I'm over in the Caribou National Forest of Idaho out uh, cruising along on my S-Bound 98s and my Alpha Free Boots and I'm with uh, another person from TelMarkTalk.com and he goes by the name of Steven and uh, he skied here before and he wanted to check out one of his favorite slopes so unfortunately <laughs> it's really dismal light. Uh, not going to be great for photography so we probably won't have a video on today's ski, but I got a question this morning from one of my subscribers, uh, Campfire Kodiak, and uh, he wanted me to do a video about blisters. I think it's great when people can find a set of boots that fit, but oftentimes the problems that you run into are people are looking for a set of boots with certain characteristics, and uh, those particular boots uh, may not work very well with their feet. Uh, not every boot is going to work for every person. And while you can do some minor corrections on by changing your size and changing your socks, you know, having one pair of socks or two pair of socks, different weights of socks, also different kinds of liners and heel lifts, there's hundreds of different things you can do to modify your boot to make them fit your feet. But sometimes some boots just aren't going to work for some people and some feet. And uh, I've had lots of problems over the years. I've had I've suffered with heel blisters, especially and particularly on Alpha boots. I've suffered with uh, blisters on the top of my toes when I've had boots that give me too much toe pinch. I've even suffered on blisters underneath the pointy bone on the ankle on uh, plastic boots on my Scarpa T4s in particular. So what I'd like to do today is uh, I'll go back to the house and I'm going to pull out some boots and uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've done to minimize uh, the problems with my feet. Now, I haven't solved them all. <laughs> I have to deal with blisters sometimes. But maybe if I just talk you through the process that I've used to, to help minimize them and some it might give you some food for thought, some different things you can try. And uh, hopefully, I uh, hope Campfire Kodak finds a solution. Uh, if he does find something that works for him with a particular set of boots, uh, I hope he posts it down below and, and can share that information so that, uh, that others can uh, benefit from it. Now it goes without saying, <laughs> the first and most important step is to get a boot that most closely matches your feet. And uh, one of the problems we have with uh, backcountry boots in particular is, is the sizing uh, can be all over the place. And also the, uh, the style and the fit varies from manufacturer to manufacturer. And there may be a boot from one manufacturer that fits your feet really well and maybe a boot from another fact manufacturer may not. If you're a person whose forefoot is wide or you have narrow heels, you need to pay particular attention that, that the boot is going to fit your feet as, as best as you can. Now you can do some modifications, you know, you can wear thin socks and heavy socks, you can use heel lifts, and you can use all kinds of liners to sort of adjust the volume in the boot itself. But if the toe box is too narrow, or the heel is, is too wide, uh, then you can run into problems. One of the things that often confuses people is that they have comfortable walking shoes or they have hiking boots. Maybe they've walked thousands of miles or kilometers, never had a blister problem. And as soon as they get a set of backcountry leather boots and they go out cross-country skiing, they start having blisters. And, and this seems a little odd. Uh, but in some respects it really isn't because hiking boots and the motion of walking and maybe even running is so different from cross-country skiing and backcountry skiing. Uh, everything is essentially magnified. You know, when you take a big stiff heavy boot like this and you attach a big long ski to it, uh, you also have maybe snow piled on top of it and you're moving through. There's just, there's so many more forces working on this boot. I think another reason why backcountry boots tend to cause more blisters than say, for example, hiking boots is that these are insulated and uh, you know when you're active and you're very aerobic and your feet tend to sweat another thing that will cause blisters is if you know if your if your feet get really moist uh, the skin softens up and anytime you have soft skin you know that soft skin working against a sock or, or a portion of the boot is more likely to form a blister than if your feet are dry we'll talk a little bit more about that in just a bit it's been my experience over the years that 
people tend to have fewer problems with a softer boot than they do with a hard leather boot when it comes to blisters. And it just makes common sense, you know, the more flexible the boot is, uh, the more that it can move with the different motions of your foot, the less likely that you're going to have the foot moving up and down inside the boot <laughs> in a different range of motion than the boot itself. There'll be less rubbing. You know, the stiffer the boot, uh, the more that it resists this forward movement and even lateral movement, uh, the more likely you are going to have blisters. Another common problem with boots has to do with blisters on the top of the toes. And uh, it's a real common problem because as you go through the cross-country motion, your foot moves forward and this boot compresses up near the toes. And if you happen to have, you know, hammer toes, if you have toes that rise up like this in the boot, as that boot moves forward, if the flex hits you right along the top of the toes, then there's a good chance it's going to rub up here and you'll get blisters up here. And uh, different boots bend in different places in the, in the toe box area. And if you happen to be trying on a set of boots in the store, you want to really put the boot through this motion if you can, you know, and, and pay particular attention to the toes of your feet just to make sure that it's not going to pinch your toes. One of the most common blister problems with backcountry, cross-country ski boots are hill blisters. And this one can be a real problem to solve. And the reason it can be a problem to solve is because just the motion of cross-country skiing. You know, the foot comes forward like this, and you get up to a certain point, and the, the flexors or, or the type of binding that you have, it sort of stops that movement, forward movement of the boot, but the uh, foot wants to continue to move forward. And so what you end up with is you end up with the boot sort of stopping at one point until it's resisted to that forward movement and the foot may just move up a little bit and then it goes down a little bit, up and down, up and down. Just a small little movement in this heel. And over a period of time, that'll cause essentially a blister. Now obviously it'd be great to have a boot where that heel gets locked into the pocket back here. And the less movement that you have in this heel, the less likely you are to have blisters. I myself have a fairly narrow heel, and uh, some boots are better than others. Um, the Alpha boots in particular have caused heel blister problems for me, and uh, especially when you get a brand new boot. You know, when you're breaking them in, the boot is not as soft, it resists that forward flex, and you get a lot of movement between the heel and the boot itself. Now my advice to anybody who gets a brand new pair of boots is to start out with caution. You, know, you don't want to throw on a brand new pair of boots and go out for a really long ski and, and damage your feet. It can mess you up for the whole season, so you need to approach any new boot with, with extra caution. Now in my case, uh, heel blisters are typically a problem, especially with new boots and especially with stiff leather boots. So when I get a new pair, before I go out on the first ski run with them, I'll, uh, I'll tape my heels up. I'll do that as a precautionary measure. Now this is not an endorsement, but the product that works best for me is this 3M Micropore tape. And uh, it's a pretty thin tape, and you wouldn't think it would be strong enough to prevent blisters. But I found that a, a thin layer of this in your problem areas over the heel goes a long ways to adding just enough strength to keep blisters from forming. If you've never used Micropore tape, you might think it's, it's not durable enough, it's not thick enough, and it might not be sticky enough to stick to your skin to, to uh, withstand the up and down motion in your heel. But uh, that's not been my case at all. Uh, one of the things you need to understand about this tape is, is that it, the adhesive is activated by water. And that's a good thing because it's not gonna come off your skin uh, as your feet sweat. But if you, have, if you have dry skin or your feet are dry, the best way to apply it is to moisten the skin before you apply the tape. And what I like to do is I like to just take a damp cloth and I just like to moisten my skin on my heel and then I'll just put the uh, micropore tape across that area and uh, if you can apply it maybe a half hour or so before you go out skiing uh, so much the better and uh, because it takes a little while for it to bond to your skin and when it does it'll stay there and if you think that one layer is not going to be enough to protect your feet you can just moisten up the first layer and put a second layer right over the top of it. 
And then when you put your, your sock on, you want to be real careful to put the sock on gently that you don't end up peeling up the tape as you, uh, as you pull it over. Now this has just been on here for a few minutes and you can see that it is getting real sticky. And uh, on my feet anyway, uh, I'll tell you after I've been out skiing for a couple hours and you come back, <laughs> it's gonna be so well stuck to your skin, you're gonna feel that it's uh, difficult to come off. And this tape here has been a, has been a real godsend for me and, and this is what I highly recommend. Now, of course, this is a preventative measure, and, and the reason I would not recommend putting this over a blister is, is that it bonds to the skin so well that if you put this over an existing blister, uh, when you pull it off, you might end up breaking that blister open or, or pulling it off altogether. Now, if you've already got a blister on your heel, you know, there's lots of different methods for, for taking care of that. Um, some people use mold skin, some people, um, I've even known people that have used the 3M Micropore tape over the top of it. And, and the way they get around it, they just don't pull that off to, on a blister. But what I really like is I like these, uh, these gel blister uh, bandages. And there's several different manufacturers that, that make these products. Um, and, and they are really, really good. They're actually designed to put right over the top of a blister. And they, they cushion the blister. You can ski with these things on. And then you can leave them on. Uh, if you apply them correctly, uh, I have found that uh, they really hold up well. They allow your, your feet to heal if, as long as the blister is not too horribly bad. And that might just be enough to, to get you through the ski or to allow you to go out and ski after you've had a blister. And I always carry some of these in my first aid kit just in case somebody I'm with uh, ends up with a blister. Now another product that a lot of people swear by is these Easy Fit uh, ankle socks. And uh, what they are is they're, they're a neoprene type material and they just they simply go over the ankle area and uh, you put these underneath your normal socks and, and the way these work is they just add another layer of protection between your boot your sock and your feet now, luckily I haven't had as big of a blister problem this year with the Alpha Vistas that I as I have with some of my other boots so I haven't had to resort to these I've simply been using the 3M Micropore tape as a preventative measure. Now, if you go out and you ski for several hours and you, you find that you only get blisters after a certain period of time, maybe on a longer ski after several miles, the problem might just be that your socks are getting wet and your feet are softening up and they, they can no longer withstand that rubbing in the boots. And uh, I had that problem on a Scarpa T4. I could ski about four miles and then the blister problems really started. And uh, so what I do is I would just take a dry pair of socks along and a little pad that I could stand on. And I knew just about at what point in the ski that the socks needed to be changed. <laughs> I would take the time, I'd change out to some dry socks and uh, that would really help and go a long ways towards blisters. I know people also use foot powder, other, other tricks to keep the feet dry. I know that can go a long ways and it just might cure some of your, your blister problems. Now hopefully, you know, the blister problem will go away after you've worn the boots for a while and put lots of miles on them. You know, either your feet are gonna adjust to the boot or the boot's gonna adjust to your feet or, or some combination thereof. Another thing you can do is, is you can experiment around with your lacing. You know, just don't lace up the boots in the standard fashion. You know, you can use some of these tricks that people use to have different tightnesses at different levels of the boot. And the way you typically do that is you, you use a surgeon knot and that allow you to have a different level of tightness at different portions of the boot. Maybe you want to put a surgeon knot down low to keep the toe box wide. And as you come up the boot, maybe you'll want to have another surgeon's knot up here so you can tighten the upper portion of the boot. Now, one of the tricks that I've used on my Alpha boots in the past is, is using a Velcro cinch strap at the very top of the boot. It sort of mirrors what a lot of the cross-country boots have where they have this Velcro strap at the top of the boots to try to lock the foot into the boot a little better. It's, uh, if your boot doesn't have a Velcro strap at the top, sometimes you can add one. This cinch strap is, is really a nice feature because it allows you to be able to tighten up this upper portion of the boot without having to tighten too much of the lower portion of the boot. And uh, that might just be the ticket that might get you through some of the problems. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's video. I hope you found some of the information useful. 
And if you're one of the few people who's never suffered with any kind of blister problems with backcountry boots, boy, count yourself lucky because uh, more often than not, I hear people complain about it. So if you have any suggestions for Campfire Kodiak, you know, leave them down below. And then, as always, if you like this video, you know, give me a thumbs up. Until next time, be safe, be kind, and be sure to treat those feet well. <laughs> happy feet makes a happy skier.